You good? Hey, yo, what's up, Headspace? It's been a minute, and we're back at it. Um, fucking scorcher of a day, so excuse the perspiration. We're about to be shinier than usual. But, um, we out here, man. We're having a conversation, or about to have a conversation. A conversation that I've been itching to have for a minute now. You know, South Africa is a country that is characterized by a lot of things, and I think one of those things is our humor. Um, like, South Africans have a history of using humor as a way to cope with everything. You know, with our inadequacies, with our struggles, with our pain. And this is why, like, for me particularly, stand-up or comedy in general, as an art form, as a practice, is one of the most important things. I feel like about never slick side. About who take it upon themselves. About who feel moved, I don't know, who feel called to make the world laugh feel like a very special bunch of people to me. Like they feel like close the closest art form to divinity in Clam but probably for me is stand-up. There's something really fucking I don't know, heavenly about laughing. It feels like an out-of-body experience, especially when really funny motherfuckers get you to tap into that place where you're able to move around your own insecurity. So, without any further ado, I'm here with a comedian who many might know. If you don't know who this person is, you will probably in a hole somewhere outdated. And uh, um, But I'm going to let the man speak for himself. All I'm going to say is I'm going to tell you who he is. And then we're just gonna send it over to him, Lewe Ben Natural. Mboom, Swangelwa, comedian. That's all I'm gonna say. And from the context of comedy, Upper South Africa, if you're known for being a comedian, you're doing pretty well. But if you're known for being a pretty funny comedian, you're doing great. But if you're known for being a pretty funny comedian, who's able to be in the context of where the funny comedians are at and build the culture of what comedy can be in this country, you're fucking special. So, I'm with a special individual. Damn, what's up? Excel, what's this? I know you guys want to edit this shit and <laughs> some applause in there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. Furthermore, this is Motherwell. Nobody's perspiring yet. Sibili. <laughs> professional comedian for about 15 of them mm. father brother son you know all of the above um, yeah man and, and and I've been wanting to do this uh, ever since you know I subscribed to this channel so yeah I'm also happy to be here man I uh, know yeah yeah much love you should respect that look um look I I I I always get fascinated by people with a great sense of humor because yeah, in these booze, but how does one get to a place? You know how comedians are always framed out in society to be these people who use humor as a way to cope with their own mm -hmm. I don't know, depression or whatever. And it's always made to sound like comedians are miserable people who use humor to try and hide their misery. I think that's pretty reductive and I think it's nonsense. Uh, I want to know what you think about that. Like, in the sense of how did humor find you, like as a thing? Like, when do you But I feel like mm. to be a comedian, you have to get to a place where you notice the humor and it becomes something you ride through. Like, life becomes very important to you in a humorous way for it to be that much of a fixture. So, I guess the question I'm trying to ask is what does humor mean to a funny guy? You know? Mm. Ah, dude, for me, I'm not that deep, right? I'm not yeah. that deep. Like I, I've, you know, I have conversations with other comedians, and they'll be like, "So what are you trying to say in that joke?" I'm like, "No, like, there's no message. It's, you know, it's just I observe something, and within, for instance, if we are like chilling like this, you get a lot of guys who are funny. Mm. You know what I mean? But they cannot translate that to a stage. For me, it's as simple as I'm naturally funny." And I know how to translate it to the, to the stage. Mm. As far as, you know, that there's some sort of deep-rooted depression or, ah, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the same with any other job, you know what I mean? Like, I think, I think if someone is an engineer, in that office there's a couple of depressed motherfuckers, but it's got nothing mm. to do. It's not with the, engineering, you know, right. I don't think that whatever I went through, he went through in his life, 
uh, talking to engineering. Uh. You know, emotionally, he's like, okay, emotionally, I have to be an engineer. So I guess, you know, there are some depressed motherfuckers in every field. Mm. I don't, I really don't think, maybe because I hang around with comedians a lot, I know that, you know, my friends, some of them, you know, they've got problems, but I don't think it's a general thing. I don't think every single comedian, yeah, man, like now myself, I don't think my problems are the reason why I'm a comedian. You know what I mean? I'm not right. You know what I mean? I, I, fuck, man, my baby mama be calling me all the time, wanting money. I'm gonna start comedy. You know? I'm gonna make, <laughs> I'm gonna make jokes. Yeah. Uh, oh, my father wasn't there when I grew up. Fuck him. I'm gonna show him. I'm gonna be a comedian. No, mm. I, I, I really. If there is a correlation between, you know. Deep rooted anxiety or depression to comedy. I don't know. It is the mode. I don't know about it. Obviously, you 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 get people who be like, oh, but what about Robin Williams and you all know, that other stuff? You know, you know, dude, so many other know, people in Steve, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 have committed suicide. James Pelosi, you know, all, all, the, all of that. All of that. I, I really don't think. Yeah, I I guess maybe just like life. I think when you're doing comedy, you can experience some sort of depression depending on whatever is going on in your life, but I really, really don't think that there's... You know one? Sure. Yeah, I don't think there's a, there's a connection. You said something like that, that that I find really, like, cool, um, and I'd like to, like, learn more about, like, the way you're about how... You're funny, and a, you, a lot of people are funny, but you outline how the difference with you is you could translate it to the stage. Mm. That translation, like, how, how, you know, if you could break it down a little, what does translating funniness to the stage mean? What kind of like entail. aspects and all of that? Yeah, what does it entail from comedy to become like just a casual quality for it to be, I don't know, a skill, a practice, a profession, you know? You have to, you have to transport the audience. You have to take them to where you were when you found whatever it is that you think is funny was funny. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you, a mo like an example, right? Mm. Um, like a funny story. A lot of funny stories end with flesh, um, dude. You just had to be there. Mm. So that's exactly what comedy is. You put them there, mm. uh, and there's techniques to that. It's not. It's not. You know. So that as long winded as some of your questions. <laughs> <laughs> like, go there, like prologue, <laughs> interface. <laughs> So it's 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 simple. It's not simple, right? But you there's techniques. Mm -hmm. You you don't you don't be like ah. Oh, so uh, imagine being no. It's from from your tone to your projection to to a lot of things, you know. But it's it's a matter of putting those people exactly where you were, mm -hmm. or as close as as possible. as possible to where you were when you found. Whatever it is that you found funny, mm. you because sometimes while well, my process works anyway is so, uh, there will be funny moments that I'm sitting in, you know, mm. funny moments that I can you know easily do that. But you know, so I'm sitting with blah 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 blah, and you guys, and then you know you get creative licenses, uh, so you add in uh, some spice there and there, mm. and there and there, there. But how usually my process works is I'll see something and I'll be like, yeah, there's something in there. Mm. Like there's some I don't know what it is, mm. but there's something in there. Mm. And then and then say home, say home, uh, and then slowly but surely, you know, it comes. Sometimes it's the punchline. Mm. So then from the weekend is moving backwards. Yeah. Or sometimes it's the premise, and then mm. you then you have to go through to the punchline. It's 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 it's. It's so easy for me, but it's hard to explain. It's like, hard, it's, yeah, I, I it's, it's hard to. I feel you. Like any any other comedian would would, would be like, yeah, 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 he's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wouldn't have to finish the sentence, but for the for like the normal person, I think it might be harder. But for me, it's it's and it's not like something that I've learned over years. It's, uh, the first time I did comedy. I use those tools because it just felt like this is what I'm supposed mm -hmm. to say and this is how I'm supposed to say this. Um, and then over time you learn you learn techniques now, mm -hmm. but but it's it, the delivery itself. You know how you just know, man. I I, I it's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. You know you just know. Uh, you know what feels right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because you you have what they would call uh, an economy of words. Right. So you try to say the most in the least amount of words. Mm -hmm. you know? 
Um, like so, I used to write everything that I think. I used to write every joke. I used to write every joke. And then when I go down and, and, and tell it, I'll come back and I'll find myself scratching unnecessary paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Just scratching because they're unnecessary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I will, like, because I was wasting books, now I will think of a joke. <laughs> Like I'll think of a joke, and I'll think of a joke, and I'll tell it in my head, I'll tell it in my head, then I'll go tell it on stage. Mm. And then if it lands, or I can see it's workable, then I'll write it down. By then, I know where, you know, which words to use. Instead of saying, um, I'm a closer man, uh, you can just say, Maureen. Mm. Yeah, well, you, yeah, you are done. Yeah, time. So trim it down. It, it's so it's those type of trim downs. Yeah. Where about, yeah. Because sometimes you you waste too much time on premises, and and over explaining to your audience. Sure. You know, I, I get a, there's a lot of comics that do that. Like the, to yeah. me, it always feels like you're about trained, like you're mm. about trained, like you you are you are underestimating their intelligence. Yeah, but, and the more you have to explain it, the the less funny it becomes. It because becomes. now there's no need to catch. Yeah, but you are, now you are given. Mm. Yeah, but then it's just like... It's like when rappers spit a punchline and they say, get it? Get you, it. you know? It's Kala Masi. It's Kala Masi. Do you get it? You know? If you get a little punchline, you work, 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 work. Kule correlation, yeah? Because I've always felt like there's a real strong affinity between like... E, 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 e comedy, ne rap. Because of like the, 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 the correlation of the language aspect. Mm. You know, you spoke of an economy of words. <clears throat> But the Fumi is very practical, but Mzanzi, you know, so-called 11 official languages, culture, still trying to navigate through these differences in our cultural, like, nuances and whatnot. Mm. Um, I noticed that as a comedian, linguistically, when it's a comedy, Yako, primarily in English, but you will have those pockets where, depending on the audience and the setup, mm. it's Tosa Sako, which, as far as I know, is the only other language you have yeah, in the yeah, arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't... Is, yeah. <laughs> I've done jokes in Afrikaans though, shit. Yes, that's what I want to go to. I, yeah. I, one of the things that really made me a fan of yours, I once saw you do a whole setup to an Afrikaans audience, yeah. and I was like, fuck, he's killing it. Because I really think there's something there to connecting the white and the black South African audience. But if you don't get for a bit, allow me to kind of get your take on this whole the politics of South Africa's linguistic landscape and like you get a band of fans, Kuma, sure. who is a funny dude but he's a vernacular comedian mm. uh, how do you think what do you think of that does that limit South Africa in does it make it difficult for a comedian to try and become I don't know global uh, if you are as Kuma and you choose to do mm. comedy in your own dialect to a particular group of people mm. is that enough i don't know what, what's mbu msongelo's take on comedy and language for me uh i think in english you know mm -hmm. i think in english sure um but when it comes to okay for for instance for me mm. i write jokes in english and then i write jokes in because like they don't overlap like you never tell you hear me translating my 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 closer joke into english mm. because it, it I, I don't know it doesn't it was totally yeah yeah but like what something i can say in closer it would be it would be hard to say in english um yes obviously it limits you if you're going to be a vernacular comedian that's going to limit you in terms of international Mm. Yeah, well, that's that, that's always been my my mindset. But uh, I'm telling these jokes because I want them to take me overseas. Mm. Uh, but niggas can flow, you know, like they can flow. Oskuma, Oskuma can. It's got an English set. It's yeah. not. It's not. But it's you know, it's not the Oskuma, Oskuma. Yeah. You know, it's it, it, it's very limiting. How how you how you vernacular comedian, because you find that Naiti when we first went to. To Joburg, right? See, I went to Joburg first. Mm. Shout out to CSA. CSA. Shout out. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna mention the, the, the names of the comedians, right? Sure. Umsiana got there. He was the first comedian to do toss. Not that they went to toss comedians. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. They was the first comedian to do toss. And those toss comedians were like, yo, man, 
these people are not going to understand you. Only because they've never done it. Mm. You know what I mean? They're like, so new, don't even try. You know? Did closer. Kill. Kill. Put, put, it on, put it on the map. You know what I mean? And for hateration purposes, I guess, the same guys were like, yo, man, you should stick to closer. Yeah, you want Ooh, and okay. So even me when I went because here's, here's a problem I'll have with myself now. Sure. Now, even to form up a mm. I know black people do. I am a black person. Even if I'm gonna tell some English jokes further down the line, I'm not gonna start off by saying good evening people. Of course. Because immediately okay, okay, I, I get good evening. Good evening, okay, good evening. Okay, good So so we have a kaule in a band. Yeah. Well, and then halfway through the yeah, I mama or patala from his coffee, so ninga na zigging and man Now yeah. but you've earned they trust. Right. Uh, so when you're vernacular, that you yi can away uh, him every time I went to perform like a soweto, to and I'd be like, oh see I'm not putting our band because I don't want to do English mm. to to a black crowd. To a township. Yeah, to a township. I don't want to do English. Suppose. Or start off with English. You know what I mean? And I was like, dude, just go and stay. I'm like, dude, brothers, understand what the phone team is. We are shaking up because I never look better. We are shaking up mm. because we're so much better than the other comedians. Mm. And all these, like, going, boom, just go in there and do your shit. Did you find me? Because he knows my jokes. Funny me. Okay, give me, give me three of my jokes that I can tell to these people. Tambo, just get in there and do your shit. <laughs> and so, about looking at the disadvantage with the vernacular, you find, for, for instance, or is paid. Mm. Can't really fuck with that here. Mm. They can't really fuck with that here. They have, they would have to basically find those thirteen petty people that 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 live and understand. You know, whatever community. If there's a petty, because there's no petty community uh, in the Eastern Cape. Yeah, yeah. There, uh, that we know. It might be petty people, petty people, but no community. There's no community. Yeah. They're not like, uh, like Nigerians. And yeah. No, there's no. So that's the limiting part of it. Mm. But your ego sometimes, yeah, but like it scares me to 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 like I said when I perform to black people, like yeah, thing, yeah. Oh, God damn it! But because of the years that I've got in the game, I have a comic, a, a plaza set, mm. and I have a, 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 an, an, an English set, and they are totally different. And you played around further with that Afrikaans pack because that's that's a. That, that, that's something. No, no man. The, re the, reason I, the, the reason I did that, and, and that's, that I can use anywhere. The reason I did that is, an, as an audience, right, if you're watching a comedian for the first time, everyone is like anxious. Because mm -hmm. everybody wants to laugh. Yeah. And everyone is, has, is, is, is hoping, hoping you, fuck by, up. you know what I mean, that you are fine. So if you can find something to say, about what's happening right now in your first two sentences mm -hmm. something to say that you have been prepared mm -hmm. you know that's what i did with those afrikaans people yeah but it's a word for afrikaans approach yeah and then immediately they were here mm -hmm. immediately they were here because they, they relaxed after oh shit this guy's funny before i even started with my set mm -hmm. now sometimes you can come in there bro guns blazing yeah, you know, but people are just like, you know, because you didn't, you didn't, you didn't. Kau ba nansi gaman, kuchai lewe. Kau ba so des. Yeah. So as a, as a, those little nuances, those, those are very important in comedy, mm. and that's where you know, I say, <coughs> I know how to translate it on stage. Mm. I know how to present, like in no way to be shaky is up. I know how to package it and go present it on stage right. using those techniques. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And and the language, oh, the language, right? I'm not investing in the Yiki Sela way, but go ahead. I just written this new joke. Class, go on. Go on. It's not a Monday joke. It's not, it's not a Monday joke. Right. But, but what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm starting to laugh, though, is that uh, as comedy is growing, uh, for instance, you can take a white guy to Monday. Mm. And they won't be like, hey, that's Kumshela, he has Kumshela, because that's his own that's, that's his home, that's his thing. You understand? That's, that's his own. Like, uh, 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 okay. Shut up. Me, I... Yeah. Calm down and get into the stuff. Okay. So, on that, like, like, like the, the language aspect of, of comedy, and 
South Africa is still a country wrestling with its own fucking identities and younger on But in the funny angle that of like a good joke and a bad joke. This is like a bone of contention, I think, for both comedians and the profession. But I think most of all, especially with class Pilago for regular people. Ha, sorry man, not to cut you ha, what? By bad joke do you mean a joke that's not funny or a funny joke that's just I mean I mean both. I mean like La Way Oba they're they just unpacking what makes a joke funny and the whole politics of is it okay to laugh at something that's I don't know, normally seen as tragic? Mm -hmm. Normally seen as painful. See, because this is why I like humor. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I had a like a legitimate depressive episode where I was diagnosed with all that psychological. I stuff. believe you. You know? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 It was too it's, much of a vocabulary not to be depressed about that shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so comedy played a major role for me learning how to laugh at my own pain and myself and be like, man, fuck it. Why? Why am I taking myself so seriously? Because if I didn't take myself so seriously, I'd see that you know, the guy in Zagabum could easily happen to anybody. Right, right. And there's a way of looking at my pain where I can look at the stupid shit I do to cause it or how I respond to it. Sure. That's hilarious when I come outside of that context of its necessity and things that have to happen. So for me, this is why I think the for me, you know, for me is, 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 is higher. I, I rate comedians higher than rappers, honestly. I think. It takes a lot to be able to manage the linguistic capacity, the crowd work, the cultural context of Muteta and Ayo that this is not a Monday joke, this is a, okay, I'm in this kind of place, there's a diverse crowd of people, they might be gay people, they might be trans people, they might be, you know, people who have special needs or whatever, disabled. So, just the fearlessness to, to, to tell life in a way that unapologetically makes mm. all of us realize some of the things we cringe at, we can loosen up. Mm. So I, I guess to that was just the preamble. I haven't asked the question. The actual question is, to move. What's a good joke? What's up with a good joke? Mm. What are the makings of a good joke? You like this is a good joke. Do you ever think about why it's a good joke? Like this is good. Yeah, I. There's like there's, there's there's a good joke. A very good joke is 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 something that is one that everybody can relate to. Sure. You know, everyone in this room can can re one of the best jokes ever written was by me. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> and I, I, I'm sure guys have written other jokes, you know, good jokes, you know, on par or even better, but I'm, I, I have to talk about that one because it transcends age, gender, race, sex, gender, do you know what I mean? It's so everyone can be like, yeah, ha -ha. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the joke is, is, is just about the word fathom. I know that's right. Yeah, it's just about the word fathom and th there's context. You know, there's context, there's that build up, and everyone, even if maybe at first you couldn't relate, uh, somewhere in that joke, you you will you will you will you will you will you be like, yeah, I, that's you know, I I get it, I can put myself there. Um, that's a good joke. That 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 transcends. I don't know if you remember <laughs> if you remember uh, a South Park episode. Which one? Was it? Um, the Kanye West one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Which was fish sticks. Fish sticks. Fish sticks. <laughs> you know that joke. It's that joke was so good. Yeah. Kanye rapped about it. <laughs> yes. You know it, that was in that episode. They're like, "This is the best joke ever," because it transcends. It like it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't leave anyone out. It does not. Uh, it's not exclusive. You know, it's not. Uh, I copy him do, but it's not for like a certain niche. It's wow. So that's a, for me. That's that is a good joke. So a good joke is is is, is a common thread. Mm. In other words. Yeah, some, some, sure. something like that. Yeah, that's a good joke. But because I don't think anyone t a bad joke would be one you know where you you intentionally go out with malice. You so know what I mean? This is what I'm talking. 
go out with my lesbians. Fuck lesbians. You know what I mean? Because one lesbian hurt you. You know mm. what I mean? Now it. Fuck, le fuck lesbians. You know I mean? If, for instance, because there's context to this, um, there's a friend of mine, Prince. He's a comedian as well, mm -hmm. Virgil Prince. Uh, and we were doing, we were doing a show in Georgia, I think 2017. Uh, at a place novel called Poppies. Prince has got a joke, a, a rape joke. Mm. Immediately. Yeah. <laughs> so he tells the joke. Uh, I, would I think he's retired now. So okay, I, can, I, can you, I, start, can yeah, you tell the joke? Please, says, at the best of your He says, he says uh, he's a colored dude. He says, you know, in the hood, if you if if, if you, you see people then people it's not they don't mean what they say like mm. sometimes they don't mean what they say they'll be like hey what's up gangster yeah. it does not mean you're a gangster that's just how people talk Yo, yeah it does not mean you're a gangster and they'll be like hey what's up player it does not mean you're a player you know that's just how people talk but if someone says what's up rapist then motherfucker you're a rapist. rapist yeah and then he ends off by saying and that's how you tell a rape joke. Now, now, there were people sitting who were not paying attention. They were not paying attention to, to, to the whole context of the joke. The only part they, had, they heard was, and that's how you tell a rape a joke. A rape joke. People got up in arms, the activists. Why, well, fuck it, you never know, no, 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 about jokes. All right, we're not going to laugh. Fuck this place, we're going to, no, 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 we're going to cancel you guys because you, 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 you're joking about rape. Hey, who's joking about rape? And then they went out telling people that we are rapists. Do you understand? Because they didn't get the context. Yes. They they did not they didn't want to get the context. They they were out there on some. Uh, let's hear what he's gonna say. And then and as soon as he said that, the the all the people who were watching and paying attention were like ah oh, ka ka ka, and then those people were swearing at the people for laughing. For laughing. Thank you. And that's sometimes for me is what I hate about I think this this culture of social media right um people get offended on behalf of other people if that makes sense and also they they have this thing where for instance if someone doesn't get catch a joke then they'll rope in other people by how much let's come here and, and, and hate on this joke because i didn't get it so i hate mm. this dude and we we as people do we as people then who and which people Mm. You know what I mean? Like that, that thing of, of recruiting fellow haters mm. for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. Because when you, you didn't get context. Um, classic example. Years back. I, mean, I know I digress now. Okay. Uh, no, please, please. Uh, uh, just, just about like people who don't... Who, who, because they don't understand or they've got their own shit of understanding. They want everyone else to be on that. When Kobe Bryant died, mm. Uh, mm. I posted, and Mamba was one of my favorite players. I posted, um, damn guys, uh, Kobe Bryant is now an ancestor. Hashtag RIP Mamba. Mm. This lady comments on some. Uh, because my bro pick, I'm holding a mic and I'm a comedian, blah, blah, blah. It's now everything I say is, is you know, it's it's it's, it's, you yeah. know what I mean? And then she says, Hi, so this is not funny, blah, 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 blah. And what if his family sees this, blah. I mean, like, this woman, like, so you are just offended on behalf of, 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 of Kobe Bryant's family, who you will never meet. I, I wanted to say, give me one name, you know, give me his wife's name or his mother's mm. name. Um, so I'm like, I tell her, I'm like, okay, this is, I can get one more hurt, ne? show me where it was supposed to be fine. Yeah. Show me where it was supposed to be fine. And her own thing, you know, is I figured out later is that she would rather I have said angel. Mm. Yeah, well, but she didn't say it like that. Yeah, well, she, has a, she has a problem with the word ancestor yeah, well, and with me. Because that lady, right, everyone came into that post on some I got a sister and he born him in the road. Then she's like, fuck you, Wayne. Eh, What's your name? She says, don't, 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 don't. Fuck you now, put it. Show a profile picture. Yes. There's no. There's no. Yes, you are. I think it touches on this thing, Yoba. I, 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 I once watched a, a very interesting YouTube video that taught me something about stand up. How 
the context of being a comedian changes how you will perceive the way we sure. yeah. before you even make the joke people expect something mm. from you they expect a laugh and therefore they bated breath waiting mm. and it's the same with being a comedian in a setup where you're expected to do comedy I think there's something to be said about the fact that there are things that can be said in a comedy club sure. by a comedian mm. that because by virtue of being in the space sure. you have the license it's the platform yeah. that is the platform mm. where you have the absolute license to turn everything about life into a joke because everybody who's coming to that room wants jokes sure. and therefore you are there to turn everything into one. Sure. And so I think there's something profound about the fact that it's like a soccer player in the soccer field. Sure. If it was a spiny and you just start dribbling a ball, somebody, you might get fired. Mm. But if you do it in the proper context, yeah, context yeah. some beautiful magic can happen. And I think people miss that about comedy as well. And that's some of the shit that happens on social media where mm. I think sometimes comedians like yourself can be caught in the crossfire of people not understanding the, the context. The context. The context that, okay, this is a comedian, so everything he says is going to have that very layered element of it's taken lightly. Sure. Nothing is meant to offend, offend but yeah. everything is meant to, to open up the pathway to think about it a little bit more deeply. You know, which is why I respect the craft. So I think there is a lot to be said about, you know, jokes and the comedy space, which is why I think Comedy spaces are, are as important as comedians. For sure. It's so important to have places, so shout out to mm. the One Room, and mm. places shout like out. that, mm. that give comedians a space to be able to make anything funny. Mm. Because if you make those same jokes in a, in a normal conversation, some of them would land as strong because you're kind of dropping them casually, mm. and some people might feel like... It's a, there's no formality. Formality, but mm. because... When you watch a comedian, you're there to see them turn everything into humor. Sure. And I think there's a lot to be said about the comedian in relation to the comedy club or the comedy space. And that's why we need to protect comedy clubs and comedy spaces. Because oh, for sure. they're as important as any other place that allows for any art to be cultivated. It's like having a painter without galleries. Mm, you know, or maybe yeah, not. You, put the you know what I mean? Yeah, right, yeah, just, that's my thing. It's like every it's medium yeah. need a context that you know here you're here to just see some paintings and sip some wine for sure here you're here to just listen to some rap mm. and leave going to a strip club here you're just here to throw some money and watch a bitch shake her ass for but sure. if she if some a woman was to come through a trendini a twerk a stage in some people might be like it's a bit too much yeah, so i think that's just some of the context that's missed we comedy when 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 professionals like yourself do the humor that you guys do. I don't know what you think about that. I, the, as comedians, we, we, we have a huge responsibility to educate our audiences, you know. Mm. It, 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 yeah, let's protect the spaces. Uh, but my thing is, educating audiences, bro. Yeah. Like, I think that's the most important thing, like, to educate the audience. To, uh, so that they can understand comedy even within the comedy context because there's people in a comedy club who don't understand comedy in the comedy context like you'll be halfway telling a joke hey, can you mean if I'm in the same Tanzan? people in Tanzan? I'm in the so you need to educate on some ah, bro, I don't know what you're Yeah, this is what I'm hoping. You can tell it. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, you know. Okay, you know, who's in the mic here? Obviously, you educate within a joke, joke, but it's important for that to happen. And Never thought about that. Uh, so I, I really love it when, for instance, the hardest crowds to, to, to perform to is is a free, the free audiences. And every comedian, every comedian watching this, you ain't shit if you haven't performed to a free audience uh, that didn't know that there was going to be comedy <laughs> and behind you with the allied chiefs and the pirates or the chiefs and the sundown <laughs> and somehow you have to like work with and the band number free bruh but the band number came for free they don't give a <laughs> fuck they don't give a fuck um, no, grab the mic from your hand for the day hey, put hey, hey. put so, so, so you can't now say um, 
Like, if you don't sit down and walk off stage, you're you're a fucking douche, bro. But we're going to buy. We're going to buy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very important to like educate. So it, that's why it's easier to to perform. Last night, mm. everybody played two hundred bucks. Mm. When everybody pays two hundred bucks to come laugh, you can say good evening, and people are like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I get anticipation. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's it, 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 it's very incumbent like uh, upon us as as especially in the Eastern Cape because. It's a very young culture. Yeah. It's a very, very, very young touch. Still at a, at a molding stage. Yes, Tina, we've, we've sort of made a culture amongst ourselves as, a, as, a as comedians. As professionals, yeah. Now, as comedians, it's, we, we move a certain way, you know, we, we, we talk, we communicate. But there's still areas where we have to educate our audiences. Like, especially a class. I don't mm. think there's enough spots like I see yeah. that, that yeah, but there's, there's not enough I mean, it's it's and those spots are needed, bro, because mm. everybody must love. And more than anything, mm. there's a kid next door who wants to do this. You know mm. what I mean? And mm. no platform whatsoever. He doesn't have no clue about where you can start it. But if this shit is happening mm. down the road, mm. then you can come through by your and Bona man Nanziga. And then and then you let the kid perform. Um come mm. like if there are people when you can see it's a car on and then not everyone on the first time is gonna kill. But sometimes you see but I know potential come yeah. through, uh work there, work there, work on that, work on that, work on that. My sound. Mm. Yeah, but so it, it, the spaces are very important oh, shit. and like, the education shit. of our audiences oh, is very important oh man this is a highlight i think mm. you you told me a lot right now it's it's both ways right mm. it's 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 protecting the spaces but it's also educating the audiences of the fact that That's this is this is yeah. this is actually mm. an art form this is sure. a so in the, in the very same way you would watch a musician and let him do the thing prove mm. themselves to do and let a comedian do that. Mm, like, I was, you guys would know this. I was, I was informed by, before I did comedy, what informed me was the hip hop community mm. of PE specifically, you know. And I, 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 I could, I could, like, what was, what was, what my man? Mm. Like, well, mm. Nobody really took, took anything that you did seriously. Right. Well, like, oh, yo, my man, yo, my nigga. Oh, my my nigga. nigga. Yo, 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 man. Yo, I'm going to do perform up as dropping bars, you know. Like, yo, 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 yo. Because it's not taken as. Because as, 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 I'm going to do the rapper, rapper, you know, what the area in Bow Spun up a transnet, you know. And whereas, so uh, there was a lot missed. By by the early set hip hop yeah. we born a, a fraternity of 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 okay. town yeah. where it was you know educating audiences like educate your audiences it was in the Bayern's I much I feel they just were cool with with the audiences that day because everyone was hip hop yeah born, they, you, it was you hardly got new. Mm. Yeah, or wanted to go to the spaces that weren't hip hop. Weren't hip hop. You could, you know what I mean. You know, they, they had to be. It was urban connection. You know, no, but you know, all these places. Yeah. But then you know, it's it's a it's a it's a craft. There should be these guys should be able to to go perform at at at, at galas. At, at, yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's it's an art, and in in terms of culture, uh, what helped me with 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 the hip hop culture is that I saw where they made a mistake. Mm. And it was around about two, four, two, three. When did eight mile come up? Two or three? Two or three. Two or three. three. Yeah. 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 Now, the PE hip hop audience was not like substantial. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, and this one night, a much and the hip hop show, one was in Central and one was in Motherwell. Mm. And I'm like, but that doesn't make any sense to me. You already have a, a, a small audience and now you're gonna, you're gonna divide them. Whereas, what did, we have one show on Friday, one show on Saturday, and then concentrate, concentrate. Yeah. And then when I started doing comedy, every comedian that I met, I'm like, you only let's go. 
next comedy, tsk, a sound. It's like, come on, it's moving. If, not, if, you know, if you ever go to any comedy show, yeah. you will see those guys who are on the poster, and then there's like five other com comics, mm -hmm. because we roll thick. Mm -hmm. You know, we roll thick to the point that now, in PE, there's enough of a comedy audience mm. that you can have two shows on one night. On one night yeah. And they're not even that far apart. But you can have a show. There was a show at the one room and there was a show at the rooftop garden the one Friday. And they were both sold out. Mm. Yeah, like, but, but that's taken years of cultivation and, and, and educating audiences to, to this craft. You understand? Mm. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Man, that's, yeah. that's real talk. That's real talk. Look, we, we just we just spoke about a good joke. Mm. Uh, now I want to get to a bad joke. You For know sure. that that's probably the most pertinent one because social media culture again. There's a lot of like hypersensitivity about speaking to the issues of oppression, speaking to the people, the issues of marginalized peoples, all peoples with this with disadvantages. You know, there's social justice warriors who are always ready to call out people who they feel are violating other people's rights, uh. right? And as a comedian, I kind of feel like it's your, it's your duty to violate those rights. I, you know, to violate them in a way, yeah. you know, to violate it's, it's them, timing. you know, yeah, to violate them, you know, get timing. timing, to violate them in a way to show that, you know, the way those rights can be understood on a deeper level is when we realize that living in them is part of the problem. That if we can, if we can move through certain identities instead of being stuck in them. And that's what I love about comedians. Comedians feel free. Sure. They're not afraid to laugh at their own identities and therefore they can skip to another person's identity, oh. gender, sex and class. Because when you make some fun of something as, as, as big as, I don't know, Udo, just Kosei, sure. you can make fun of anything. Oh. You, can make, you can make fun of anything because then nothing is sacred. Sure. You understand that all these things we hold dear to because they're sentimental to us, but laughing at them is part of the the power of being able to see how we can transcend sure. these things. So that's why I think comedy is so dope. So kind of bad jokes. Um, do you think laughing at heinous crimes, heinous injustices, the rape joke, you know, oh. rape jokes, Physical abuse jokes, gay jokes, trans jokes, Dave Chappelle, mm. you know, and all, all kinds of jokes that are centered around people who feel like their experiences are currently oppressed. Uh, it, it, do you think as, 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 a, as comedians it's okay to, 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 to play in that ground? Absolutely. Mm. And, 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 and like I said, it's, it's, it, we live in a world where people get, you know, they get offended on, on behalf of other people. Like... Because everything rests down on, on context. That that a bad joke would be, you know, to say so the the other bad joke I heard uh, I don't think he meant malice by it, but the delivery was off. The, uh, yeah and the, it was badly written. It, 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 was a, it was a it was a funny joke. Uh with a friend of mine, um uh, But <laughs> Chick on a wheelchair. <laughs> okay. It was a funny joke, but it, it, it it's for, like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's an audience thing. You know, you have to know the platform. Like, cause I think we were on 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 Mufabo when he told that joke. Yeah, yeah, perfectly. This joke, he says, or on a wheelchair. Something, something, something. I can't kiss her. Yeah. Next thing you know, what my dumb push. Some, some you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it. so sometimes you have to you have to understand the platform because we were on when you see I told that joke we were on BE. Yeah, I see I, a joke and, and that's and, hilarious. And, and that's one, as soon as he said, "Cherry, I'm cherry." Part two, turn it off. Yeah, because of the 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 the. the the location, the platform. Yeah. So yeah. the listeners. The the, 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 is, the, yes. Yes. Yeah. And offending. Yeah. 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 In so you have it sometimes like the way. I love CSM because of the stories. It's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a bad joke considering the the platform. Ah. Uh, what? So so what are you saying? Are you saying 
Yeah. Bad jokes are contextual? Sound! They, are, they, 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 they I mean, they are clearly bad. I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, can't, they, are, they are clearly bad jokes. Yeah, like, they are clearly bad jokes. Poorly written, poorly, poorly uh, thought out. Uh, I, get, I get it. No, you know. Mm. But then there are the bad jokes that are good jokes uh, in the wrong in context. In the wrong context and the wrong platform. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, I can't. I'm trying to think of an example of like a really, really bad joke. But you know, guys, I think it's. Have you ever seen. I don't know. There's a dude who went viral a couple of years ago, a comedian, what's his name, called Tony Heathcliff. And he made this joke. It wasn't really a joke. He kind of just made fun of Chinese people. Because mm -hmm. the comedian that was introducing him was Chinese. So he comes into the stage and says, I can't believe you're laughing for this guy. You know, he's just making a gunpowder. Look at the... Blah, blah, blah. And he started, he, started, he started making it a stereotype rant. Right? Are you right? And, and, and that moment, Heathcliff trended. But it made me think about... Because I chuckled when he did that. I chuckled mm. because the impersonations were funny. Sure. He did a funny impersonation of Chinese people. Mm. Talking about cooking dogs and all of that. But then I was like, no, my little joke. You know? And, and this is my, why I still think about it. Yeah, but what's a good joke though? Because I think... Our biases, our, you know, it's easy to laugh at the things we, we, we notice as people like, you know, you ever notice how? Mm. Even when we know it kind of crosses a boundary of mm. respect. V hey, man, for me, like I said, I think motherfuckers like, just out there in the world are just too, in, too they feel too entitled to shit. Mm. They're too entitled and they... It, Free speech is free speech, fine, yeah? but you know, sometimes, most of the time, you should be like, yo man, I don't find that funny, mm -hmm. and then sit it out. My problem is, you know, I didn't find it funny, I thought it was offensive, so let's all not find it funny mm -hmm. and offensive. That, that's where my problem lies, mm -hmm. because there's different, there's, I mean, you, you, you watch a guy like, like Anthony Chesson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anthony, Anthony Chesson is brutal, do you know what I mean? And, and he understands that there are, there's people who hate him. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, fine, switch off your TV, change the channel. Don't, like, you know, mm -hmm. you have that, you have that option to Louis say. Louis C.K. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Louis C.K. Like, opens up, he's like, the thing about abortions. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> yeah. But everyone who's there, no one is there is going to go, uh, come guys, let's go, this guy, is, I don't, I don't like that joke, so everyone here, let's go. It's, it's that recruitment thing about uh, everyone must feel like how I feel. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, especially when, not when, not when it's, it's, it's a feeling of joy. Okay, don't, don't want one wants to spread joy. Mm. But if, we, if it's going to be hate, I can't, I don't want to hate by myself. I, I want to, I, 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 let me collect other people uh, to hate with me. And that's for me, it's, 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 it's those, those white people entitlements. Sure. Is that what? And the way, like the Western world, for instance, as soon as they're done with something, they will outlaw it. True. Murder. Uh, colonization. Pillaging. Slavery. As soon as they are done with it. Hey, 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 guys, 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 guys. Mm. Cocaine, selling drugs. Hey, hey, guys, this is illegal now. And now it's become with words. Yeah. Uh, you can't call someone retarded. Can't call someone a faggot. You can't, you can't I, I don't know if you could ever call someone a faggot. <laughs> <laughs> That's not clinical. <laughs> and 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 I I had a friend of mine. Um, I told a joke when I said retarded, and the entire audience said you can't say retarded. You can't say it. And I'm like, yo man, this shit is my second language. That one. And this is how I learned it. Go Nina every now every now and then you're gonna change it because you feel that this is offensive. I've never heard one retarded person be like, we'll call me retarded. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I heard two, two white ladies, years ago, um, I was behind them at spa, and the one is telling a story, like, okay, about some black gentleman, blah, 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 and the other one, like, and that I think because of the, I was dressed the way that I was dressed, they thought I couldn't understand what they were saying, and the other one is like, <laughs> no, you can't, you, you can't call them black anymore. They don't like that. I'm like, who the fuck have you heard that from? You understand mm. that because of their connotations when it comes to the word black, 
it's it, 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 it's how they feel. Yeah. Oba, oba, okay, Tina, with you, every time they say black, you know, they mean air, yeah, lower. Mm. And every time they say retarded, it's it's an insult. Mm. It's an insult to someone. So now the rest of the world cannot. And uh, most of the world, English is a second language. Yeah. Even this way, is the pronouns, pronouns. Yeah, non non binary. Do you understand that? In South Africa, we have 11 official languages, right? Mm. Only two of them have gender pronouns. Mm. You can guess which two. <laughs> uh, go, uh, there's no gender pronouns in any other language. Right. Mm. Is it his or hers? <laughs> Him, her, loa. Loa. <laughs> no other, no, no, no indigenously yeah. South African language has gender pronouns. But now we have to go into the fight because not to see a culture sometimes. Because that's this, not our fight at all. This is the thing. You, you touch so beautifully, along with that. I think um, words travel a journey. And this journey is a collective journey, and it's a difficult one. Where I know gay people who have reclaimed the word morphine. Why did you go like this? Because yeah? they don't gay people. <laughs> He's part of the community. I know. Because gay, <laughs> gay people are close. Because gay people are close. I'm going to I'm going to roll. I know gay people mm. who who have reclaimed the word morphine. Sure. I know, you know, blacks who reclaimed the word kaffir. Nigger, obviously, mm. most famously, but that's my thing. I, one of the reasons I love stand up is that it shows us that it isn't the words in and of themselves, it isn't the mm. slurs, it's, it's how we decide to use these words. Mm. It's, it's how we, if we decide to claim a word back mm. and make it ours, we're gonna do it with a ferocity and with a humor that makes you not want to use it. When, when white people were calling black people niggers, it hurt. Mm. When black people took it on and made it theirs, now white people can't say it. And I think that's the power of comedy. Where if you make a rape joke, you empower a person who's been through it so much so that they're able to take a traumatic experience mm. and still, in the same breath, be able to laugh at the context around how something that wild and that tragic can happen. I think that's the sweet spot with comedy, Lawi, is that it just has to cross all formality and all kindness and all privilege and all kind of the, politeness. The, the proverbial, proverbial red tapes. Yeah, the proverbial red tapes. Uh, comedy has to be vulgar, I think. I think real good comedy is a vulgar art form. Not vulgar in the sense of his talk, but uh, vulgarity in the sense that it crosses the line of what is polite. Because uh, when you look at what is polite is you you're trying to respect people on a linguistic basis. Not sure. really. You could be polite to someone you don't even fuck with. Mm. You know? But comedians press at that. They go, if I don't like you, I don't like you. Why are we busy yeah, trying to pretend yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the beauty of the art form. And I will, I will die on that hill. Because mm -hmm. I think we use language to try and interact with each other. Which is why I think, you know, to come to, you know, the, 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 the question that I'm trying to ask him is that... As boom song, yagi 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 comedy game was not form, but so that so do you think that making comedy out of tragedy, you know, tragedies like rape, death, mm -hmm. grief, oppression, do you find that important to your art form? Do you have a, a, a death joke, a rape joke, and all these things? And I, I'm just trying to get into the mind yeah. of a comedian when you decide to say, you know what, I have a mother that died or a cousin that died and I'm courageous enough to, lo to laugh sure. about it with an audience. And so I'm, hey, you know what happens when your mom dies? You realize oh. nobody can, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, 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 my protege uh, took his life a year ago. Amen. And R.I.P. is Pelele. R.I.P. is Pelele. And after he passed, fuck him also for that. I, 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 <laughs> see, yeah, that's what you can I, do with comedy. I, 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 I had like the sit, uh, but it wasn't like I don't even remember the jokes. But I had, I had a sit closely after his his, his passing. I had a sit about the grief and experience. Like I was talking, like crying in my Swedish, because I, I remember talking about it. Because this shit is happening to me, mm -hmm. like. 
Because I'm not a, you know, I don't like crying in front of people. I don't care unless my team has just lost the final or something sports related. Yeah. But I'm, I, I, anything else, I don't like to cry. You know what I mean? And the weirdest thing about grief, uh, I was talking about this, is that tears just fall by themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I, I cried on my armlet. I remember I was rolling weed and, and then tears just like Dro dropped out yeah, of my joint. Out of my joint and whatnot. I was smoking tears of Pelele, like it, you know what I mean? And like I say, it's 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 if there's no malice, you you can you can immediately hear the tone of, of, of this person that's talking. But they, there's no malice here. Uh, yes, the Bakwana Banu who and yes the 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 the, the desired effect. Right? Sure. Of, of, of talking about such sites such, such, is when you start talking about it, there's people who like, hey, but we don't talk about death. Mm. But by the time you are done, they like, hey, that was yes, fun. you know, I know what you're talking, talking about. about. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm. Uh, so it's, it's it's a line, man, that you straddle. You, you chiseling Kobe about it. Yeah. Mm. You chiseling Kobe about it. I'm going to my phone, I'm going to my It's it, that's that's one of those beauties about this craft uh, is when you can you can you can navigate your own shit like you said because you have to start with your own shit like that you can't talk about someone else's grief I can't I I, I can't say hey hey you hey, 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 so like I'm all late hey like I love you and I I can't you know what I mean? it's uh, that's 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 type of malicious. Like I wouldn't, mm. I wouldn't use your pain for uh, my for laughs. Or, for laugh. Do you know mm. what I mean? But I can use my pain uh, yeah. and my experience for laughs. Mm. Uh, and if someone here in the audience is has experienced the same thing, initially I think they'll be like, you know, hey, don't talk about death. No, 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 no. But mm. by the end they'll be like, I am an song Sure. Yeah, but because there was never any. From the from my tone to my delivery, there was never any malice intended, and this is gezela band. And that's the thing about comedy; it's not about gezela band. Mm. That's the difference, I think, mm. between 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 good and bad jokes. Mm. Yeah, but it's, it's it's that's a highlight. Yeah, it's making it's make it's, it's the difference between making people laugh or making fun of people. Mm. Making fun of people, that bad jokes. Funny. Yeah, that, that that's a bad joke. Yes, if last night, if I'm hosting a show, right, I will make fun of people in a manner that we all laugh, including themselves. I will yeah. involve them in the joke. Hey, no, 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 what do you do? Blah, 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 blah. But there's a difference. If, if I'm performing and someone keeps on making a noise or disturbing me, then I'm going to make fun of that person. I'm going to roast them so that we all laugh at that person. Mm. But I will never sit down and write a joke making fun of someone. Mm. Yeah, but I will make fun at something that we are all. But making fun of people, it's, it's, make people laugh. Don't make fun of them. Don't even make fun of the situation. Make, make the situation funny. Bro, yeah, see, this, this, is, this is the exact conversation I had. I was telling somebody close to me that I'm having an interview with you. Mm. And they asked me, so what do you think is a bad joke? And it's exactly like what I said. I said, mm -hmm. I, I think comedians are good at the art of not making fun of the thing in itself, but making fun of the circumstances mm -hmm. that lead to it or around oh, it. Oh. So I, I love comedians because they play the periphery. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you're able to make people realize what causes, what leads mm -hmm. to that pain. Sure. You don't make fun of the pain itself. itself. You don't go, ha ha, look no. at you, you have a you, broken you, leg. You can make fun of the situation. Yeah. For, for instance, what yeah. well, <laughs> you make fun of what you want to Yes. <laughs> yes. No, you don't care. No, you don't care. You don't care. You don't care. You don't your girlfriend is love What you go, isn't that funny? Yeah, but the circumstances are, I actually have, and please search a hashtag uh, when you're watching this on, on Facebook. Uh, hashtag Stena Stories. 
I talk about Uche Rapa. And you spell Stena Stories. You need to get that hashtag. S T S T E N A. Okay. Stories. One mm. word. It's a hashtag. Just blah, that hashtag. And just read. It's it's Uche Rapa. <laughs> Some of them are just embellished. You know what I mean? Right. By me, you know what I mean? Some of them are just general stories that I've I've thought up by myself. So I I'll put a character to it. So yeah. Most of the time it'll be me. Yeah. But it's like hilarious shit. Like it's it's hilarious because of the situations around it. Because of the situations around it. Like no, I'm sure I just like my friend just sent me something right You'll now. You'll see this shit now. This is one of the stories, and this this is this is a true story. Because uh, this is what I'm talking about. I think that's really what comedy does. It 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 it. I think comedians live on the outlines. You know, they live on the on those edges that allow us to to look at the center a bit differently. We're not talking about the rape. We're not talking about uh, the rondo. And we're talking about the the outlines. Out, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I sent this to my my high school friend. Was this actually happened? <laughs> That's how you spell Steen stories. Yeah. Sure. Really you, you, you never forget the first time Icheriam, Yasmela, Galumjita, Yas Yasmel, Yasimela, Yasimela, Galumjita, and Nikela, your life, FVIP, after his social. FVP! FVP! You! After his social. See, crew deep, Namajita, see, I'm going to get a pachero. She jumped from behind him and acting like she just noticed me. She just said, hey my friends. <laughs> and then her and her friends burst out laughing. I told my friends I already dug that chick. It's like I called me dad for <laughs> <laughs> dad! True story. True story. It's ah, crazy. So, yeah, but it, the, it's the like the the situations around the yeah. game. No, because yeah. that, that some of those shit is it's like it's hilarious, bro. Mm. Like I would never, bro. It's it's it really is. There's there's a friend of ours who lost the car. We didn't make fun of him because <laughs> he lost the car. But uh, after he lost the car, he was looking for the car underneath other cars. How much did he pay? Yeah. Losing a car is not funny. It's like, bad. Like, what is this coming out of you like, bro? It's true. And it's one of those like we didn't laugh at him at that time. You know, right? Yeah, well, we, it's something that when he picked himself, we laughed obviously on the side, but yeah. Yeah, no. but when we was, when we thought he was ready to hear it, my phone didn't. I was I was trying to think of a story now. It's like it's like a uh, how we how we will make sure you go up up like no why you physically no why you. First, we will make sure we grand. Mm. And as soon as you go out of your pagawa, then you're going to start laughing. Yeah. Because it's how you fell, mm. not because you fell. Sure. You know, ain't nobody wants to. What if you died? Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's how you fell. It's how, exactly. <laughs> this is the thing. Comedy plays mm. around the edges. That, I want to I wanna conclude this by, 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 by doing like a quick. It's not a quiz. I just really. I've been curious on your view. Um, about like South African comedy as it has emerged, grown, evolved. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some names, and I just want you to tell me what you think about them, and you know, sure, what sure, it means sure. to you. So, um, Mushefa, that was wrong. Mushefi. Yeah. Classic, classic. I classic like like. When, when, and this this always happens with music. When you can play a song forever, mm. it transcends generations and whatnot. I I know that I can watch Nyaka Nyaka with my kids, mm. and Um Shefi will still be classic. I think Um Shefana was was brilliant. I it, I don't know if I've ever seen him in anything else. Yeah, I've a couple of movies. I I never old me, Salah really, I've never seen, but on Nyaka Nyaka. Yeah, yeah. No ways. Like it's 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 a it's a classic. It's it's one of those, you know, top hundred. Yeah. Yeah, if yeah. even was. That's a, that's classic. Got you. Mm. Leon Schuster. Classic. 
Okay, we got an episode yes. called Leon Schuster is apartheid humor. So I, right. I don't want, I'm not gonna get you on that. I just want to know what All you right. think about Leon Schuster. Classic. Um, I had a conversation with the with the with, with this guy. Um, Schuster? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. He was, and I, I think for me, it's it's one of those things that um, taking pe other people's um, being offended. So. This guy is like, nah, man. I remember growing up, Leon Schuster was offensive as fuck. I'm like, no, he wasn't. We were all laughing at Leon Schuster. <laughs> yeah, we, we were didn't. all laughing. At we Leon didn't get that shit. We yeah. just were laughing at the fucking yeah. slaps. And, and then this guy tells me, like, no, because blackface. But I'm like, blackface is American, though. It's, it's like, you know, it'll be like a, a, a white guy in South Africa calling me nigger. I'm scared of it, but okay, whatever. Like, it doesn't, doesn't, mm. doesn't land alone, though. Yeah, but, or, or a white guy calling, like if you had, if a white guy had to go to America and call a black guy clever, uh, the guy would be like, nigga, what is that? What the fuck you on about, nigga? The fuck yeah. out of my way, you know what I mean? So, in the blackface, it never, it was not offensive to us because it never happened. Mm. And the Leon Schuster would dress as a black guy, yeah, but he'd act that part as a black guy. He wouldn't, because what blackface was, was because they didn't want any black actors. Mm. The white guy. Yeah. That is that is the difference. So Leon Schuster did not do black. He did costumes. No, 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 no. And I, I don't think he was racist. I think the most, the most hilarious, maybe slightly racist in terms of if you take the socioeconomic is when he, when he took those colored guys and made them stare like at a chicken's ass. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that, that shit was hilarious. I mean, in retrospect, I'm like, oh, I want to Leon Schuster. But, but I, I think Leon Schuster is South African. Comedic top five. Easily. Okay. okay. Easily. Easily. This episode will be three hours long if I try to engage on that, so I'm gonna move. Uh, uh, move I'm not gonna move. Um Joe Mafel. Uh legend. Legend, 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 legend. Um you still haven't mentioned like a stand-up comedian, but in comedy. I'm I'm going there. Uh, I'm going there. Hold up. Legend. Legend. Um and I guess the thing with 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 with, with, with ooh, the late Joe Mafela is that when you get to understand, yeah, but when you when you take away his tool, mm. I mean, he 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 he, 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 he really made that character like well, go who's Tomo? I think you, we only found out when we were in our like, teens that his name is Joe Mafela. Joe Mafela, yeah. Who's Tomo? Who's good? Is nice. And when you take away and then you see his work outside. Very, very under celebrated, I feel. As a mm. comedic writer? Uh, yo, 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 yo. As a very, comedic writer? Very under, under celebrated, in my opinion. Very happy. Oh! Mchongin. Rain Tongwa. Rain Tongwa. Very was good. Like, like I said, it's, it's, it's hard. I don't have a sample, a big enough sample size of his work mm. i only know Vela. somebody uh, told me they have recordings of because they don't know apparently had comedy tapes oh word yeah somebody who was who was telling us about this that they had i wasn't you want that somebody has rent did comedy vinyls oh, shit. he has jokes oh, he has vinyls okay. with jokes on it so oh, wow. unless like, he, he, he did it. yeah 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 rent oh. was legitimately writing comedy oh, recording cool. comedy oh. acting out his whole career was about comedic expression and mm -hmm. you know, this is why these names, you know, because but yeah, we gotta find that, we gotta find that. I forgot mm -hmm. who was telling me about the fact that they were listening when they were younger, their mm -hmm. family had a, a, a vinyl, a vinyl really? Kaka Rinko Kwan, yes. who had, he had different jokes in his oh, talks, like little anecdotes, cool. stories that you, he told. Oh, I wanna check, I wanna check this yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Going on that, Casey. Wow, well, Casey. The 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 he would act out different characters and he'd do, he'd do whole sketches on his radio show of, you know, an old lady screaming at him, nah, I can't. No, I, 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 I don't think he moved the, the, the needle on, 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 on 
content. Yeah, this is this is the content we want. All the Casey fans, get it, Moo, if you feel like. Bring it. <laughs> Bring it. All right. Did he pass away? Yeah, he did pass away. Yeah. Pass away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, Kathy uh, legend, pioneer. Right. Uh, yeah, man, he's 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 there. He took it to the next level. In terms, even the movie making and yeah, whatnot, yeah. open open doors. Like guys are making movies because of Kachis. Guys are comedians because of Kachis. Mm. Uh, more than I think anyone else, guy comedians are comedians right now because of Kachis. Maybe the younger comics might not feel the ripple effect mm. as hard, mm. you know. But it's because of of Yeah. And they become all oh, that 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 crew that fraternity. Yeah. That era. Everyone, everybody here is yeah. a is a kind of comedian. comedian because of those guys. Hold that thought and like Buzo Buzo after that. But the last one uh is the last name is Trevor Uh biggest South African comedian ever. Yeah. Biggest South African comedian ever. Done the most by by what he's done, he's done the most for South African stand up. Reason being, you go to a country like the United States, sure. people there are very ignorant. Yes. Very, very ignorant. If you say, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to do, go, go, go perform there and whatnot, to, to get slots and whatnot. But I know for a fact that if you had to tell the promoter, oh man, um, I'm a comedian from South Africa, do you mind if I get five minutes? This first instinct, you'd be like, oh, you know Trevor No. Mm. And you'd be like, yeah, man, he stays in Soweto, I stay in uh, Komataki, we neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> but because of what he's done, they will take you seriously if you say you are a South African comedian. No other, com I mean, no use of call us funny, David Carr is funny, no, 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 they've been in there. No South African comedian has done what he's done mm. and he cannot be undone also he's incredibly smart Trevor bro he's incredibly smart like he's incredibly smart he's incredibly hard working when we did when we did our uh, Nation Wild Nation Wild that guy check that one out links in the description uh, who has done Nation Show Max episode 11 when we did uh, uh, Nation Wild I was episode 11, but in the shooting, I was the first, I was the first um, act. Mm. Uh, the producer Ryan is like, yo man, you understand why you're the first act? Right? I'm like, nah, I don't give a fuck. He's like, no. Oh. Because it was sold as if, uh, oh come on man, it was sold like Trevor Noah handpicked. Yes, comedian. Com that, that's what it was sold as? Yeah. What, what, what was it really? Nah nigga, most of us ain't never met that <laughs> Did he even know you? Did he even, know him? No, Did he even watch you niggas or like no, right. oh him? So Ryan is like, yo man, you need to go first. You know, it's like you know why you're going first. I'm like, nah, but it doesn't matter. It's like the reason you're going first, so that he sees you first. Mm. And then he relaxes in terms of the, the other twelve people coming. <laughs> Oh shit. So, I, know, I know who so, the other twelve people were, so, so that's hilarious. So so we shot for two days. Um, this guy, he sat backstage, like you are, you are here. He sat backstage and he listened to all of our sets. He listened to all of our sets and took this fucking hour. And he, it's very repetitive, especially for, for him because yeah. he had to walk in and be like, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. nah, 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 nah. Uh, and he, we, he, at the end of every night, after like three, four hours of shooting, he has a critique for each and every comedian that's specific to that comedian. Mm -hmm. He'd be like, yo, that joke, maybe, do, 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 do. yeah, that was nice, but that joke, do, 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 do. he sat in, and then we, we, uh, um, in inverted or unwittingly, we saw his schedule. We saw his schedule. Trevor no schedule. <laughs> Nigga is booked two years in advance. And I'm not talking about, you know, boardwalk. Yeah. No, 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 no. Don't task me, nigga. 
Tuscany for like a week, Switzerland for like a week. Then you have to go shoot. LA, shoot. LA, Canada. Like like yeah. it's 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 and please understand, bro. We're not we're not talking about here yeah, two point five grand and you know yeah. it's it, it's it's mad God, but what he's done and in the manner he's done it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you turn that off, but if we go, we're about to be done in a bit. Yeah. So from that, uh, I want to take it to. You know, Americans have found a space to take stand-up comedians mm. and introduce them to the general public via um, sketch comedy shows. Mm. You know, I I I have always felt passionate about that. I've always been like, oh man. Pure not, it could have been that. Mm. Um, what do you think that we need a sketch comedy show to bridge the gap of the talented comedians trickling or being translated into the general mass? Do you think we need some kind of medium that allows people TikTok. to get there? Isn't it the TikTok, isn't it? You think TikTok is that now? Yeah, I, I, I... There will always be space, but you know, for 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 those shows, and they are. You just people hardly watch normal TV. Like if you're gonna put it on SABC One or SABC Two, I don't know if I'll ever see it because I have to. Why do you stream? Yes, yes, that's that 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 would be ideal. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, I think there are, and yeah, man, TikTok. It's it's that's what people do now, and, and those TikTok niggas end up in these. Mm. Sort of shows, and you have mm. to. Mm. Um, I would love a sketch show, uh, but also I wouldn't necessarily be the target audience, mm. and I would be cool with that. Like when Pure Manati was playing, my parents were in their forties, I guess, mm. and they were never interested in that. Uh, but I don't think Pio Manati was trying to get everyone to yeah, be an yeah, audience yeah. member. So, mm. so I think there's definitely room for that. I'm, I'm, I'm probably not the, the, the target. Unless it's very good. Oh. It needs to be very good for me to watch it anyway. But I think yes, 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 definitely. That shit could work. You can get it like a Key and Peel type vibe. Because uh, that works. Um, but I think there are. I, I, just not, I, I, I just don't know them. But I think mm. there, should, there are some sketch comedy shows, man. In South Africa? No, not really. No, no, not, really? not, not on the old media landscape. We don't oh. like right now. The the last comedy thing we really had was Gafis with Dikas Bantuau. Oh, like, and that was a late night show for oh, us. Oh man. You know what I mean? Like I think after Pio Monati, and he mentioned oh. that as well. How he tried to get Pio Monati back. Sure. Right there. And SABC had the rights. Gafis with Dikas was on the headspace. No, no, no. I mean, I watched an interview. I, I wish, <laughs> yo, if Gafis was just. Ah, uh, dude, why are you say that? Well, I'm still here. Yo. Like, wait for me to leave, bro. Like, <laughs> yo, yo, yo. But if Gunners is just watching this, heads crazy. Yelling about wanting to get the rights to Pure Monati back and the SABC had that. Because what he was trying to do before Bandu Ao was get Pure Monati back mm. and, and try to turn it into like an SNL type. Sure. Because SNL is like virtually an institution. Everybody from mm. Chris Rock to Eddie Murphy. Mm, everybody. And everyone came out of SNL. Mm. Mm. And, and I like that idea. That's I like cool. the idea of a platform that oh. is there to. Yeah. To so, channel out, uh, you know, the best of the I, comic. I think in that regard, Nick, this this era of, of social media, I think, makes it harder to, to sort of establish that. Because SNL started way before yeah, social media. Like so it's, it's, it's already, you know, culturally, mm -hmm. culturally uh, accepted. And they could use these, these, um, these other mediums and whatnot. It's already a, a, a foundation, it's already a staple, you know. Mm. And they'll keep on like spurning because they, they look for comedians or not. But to start something now from, from scratch. From scratch. Yeah man, it's it's it, 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 it'll have to be you'll have to be smart about it. Mm. I don't I, I don't know how you would do but whoever Maybe can do it. Maybe use the pure monati brand. That's what I'm saying. Right quite that would actually work. These new com comedians, Prakash Lati Machita, guess the name. Yeah, but we will make cameo appearances. Yeah. We will make cameo, but you guys write, don't, 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 and then you act this out. And then that can now slowly become that SNL. 
if you, if you, if you, if, if, it's like, I wouldn't say that that would be like the staple. I remember back, back in the day, Amer in, in America, the, the holy, the, 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 the pantheon mm -hmm. of, 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 of when you made it mm -hmm. was when you were on the Tonight Show. Yes. Jay that, Leno. That, yeah. No, way before Jay Leno. Way before Jay Leno? Oh, it cost him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cost yes, cost yeah. Cost him. Yeah. Cost him. Yeah. So, what, how we used to do it, right? A comedian would come through, he'd do a set. Mm -hmm. Already on, in, on that, its own. Yeah, nigga, you, you, you. You there? You, know, you were there. You the guy. But what, 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 what then made you even further is if he invites you to the crowd, couch. Mm. If he says, come through, chill on the couch. And talk. And talk. Then, 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 then you are going immediately to SNL. Well, it's, it's sort of like a high school yes. academy. Yes. No, 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 no. Uh, but I, yeah, that would be a good idea, man. To, to have sort of a, a bridging, bridging gap mm. between. Just like they would do with like soccer before, you know, rugby or any yeah, sports. Yeah, yeah. Like, like an academy <coughs> about to refine, to prepare you from college to playing professional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'd be for that. Probably. Mm. Dumbo, time. it's been an amazing conversation. It is, man. Just like I thought. Look, this is, this is a conversation, open talk with who I feel is one of the most important comedians of our time. Uh, it's the headspace. So you can always talk shit. If you feel like anything we said was fucked up, talk to us in the comment section. We do engage. If you don't know this channel, it's about time you subscribe. I give thanks to Mboom Songelwa, to you, the subscribers. He's a subscriber too, so you, you best believe if you guys subscribe. Not only am, am I the client, I'm the player present. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's what it do. So I gotta, I gotta leave the time we have aside for, you know, some plugs. If you wanna plug anything from social media to, oh, man, when is this to event. Probably, you know, the week after this. Oh, word. Uh, okay, cool. Um, just follow me, man. Stand Up Mbu on, on, on all platforms. Stand Up Mbu, one word. Um, join us on the 24th of November at the Music Kitchen. We have my show called The Stand Up People. It's a summer thing. Okay. It's a summer thing. We got DJs, we got comedians, we got yeah. live bands, we got crafts, we got stores. And, and, and it's my child, I get to Naga, so... It's a Sunday, the show is from 12 to 6. I want For the younger people who, who want to groove afterwards, we'll give you enough time to go and groove further. Uh, but Dina would like to be home, you know, by a certain time. Uh, do join us, man. We've got hilarious, um, including my team, obviously. Uh, Kazolo, mm. Fainzala, mm. one of the funniest people, Mir Miramesh. No, shit, we Natasha. Got, we got Miss Lou on the decks. Mm. Uh, Miss J in, 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 in thought because she won't be there to join us. But we've got <laughs> Nali Chu and Zez Mantuana doing her day. I was a delay. <laughs> Peace out, guys. Peace out. Appreciate you, man. Peace out.